there are multiple deeply unserious college football programs in power five conferences. Every one of them has every conference has some, and it just depends on the level of deeply unserious. And sometimes it's, you know, you just, you don't have the resources to compete. You don't have the fan bases. You don't have the boosters. You don't have the alumni, the recruiting base, whatever the case may be. And yet somehow you find yourself inside a power conference. And each conference has. And for the most part, those schools do everything they can to not have the bag ripped off their heads from the Scooby-Doo gang and then have to say, I would have gone away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. Northwestern had the bag ripped off their head. And it's embarrassing for Northwestern. It continues to be embarrassing for Northwestern to the point where you start to wonder, like, what the hell are you doing? Northwestern is building a new football stadium at the site of their current football stadium, which means for the next two years, they got an issue. Now, I think it, it certainly sounds as if they're going to try to make the best of a somewhat bad situation. That they're going to try to play a game or two each year at Wrigley Field and make it like, oh, hey, you know what? It's going to be kind of cool. You're going to play at Wrigley Field. It's going to be a neat experience for the players. It's going to be a neat experience for the fans. Uh, maybe play a game at Soldier Field. And for, probably for the most part, play their games, the regular scheduled home games at the MLS stadium in Chicago. It's not great, but for two years, you do what you got to do. I mean, your hand is forced. Northwestern, if you've never been or don't know, completely landlocked campus um, where Ryan Field is in literally like a residential neighborhood. Now, it's great. Um, my friends, a couple of friends and I went to the game at Northwestern, uh, to a game at Northwestern a couple of years ago where, um, you know, you parked a couple of blocks away from the stadium for $4 because like, you parked at the metro station where the train stops for 4 bucks. Pretty pretty much any other college football game, if you're trying to park within like a mile, you're like 25 bucks. A few blocks away, Ryan Field, 4 bucks. It was great. Uh, it was also great because it was uh, early November in on Lake Michigan. And uh, for the most part, I, c- I couldn't watch the game as much as I sat and stared at like a willow tree in one end zone, just waiting for it to snap because it was so windy and disgusting. Now, we were smart. We bought our tickets underneath like the overhang. We literally got on Google Maps and counted how many rows there were until you got under the underhang and then found tickets on StubHub, I think, and purchased tickets there. So we were sheltered by the early November rainfall and wind wind that so many other people had to deal with. So I got like a little bit of affinity for Ryan Field, but I completely understand the idea that it needed torn down and rebuilt. It was disjointed mess. Uh, it was uh, like really nice high school stadium. And when you're a Division One football program and you're supposed to be Chicago's Big Ten team, it wasn't exactly getting the job done. So you, they're in a tough situation. So they got to find ways to make things somewhat interesting over the course of the next two years for their players and fans to make this worth it, right? Like if you're just going to say, we're going to play all of our home games at the MLS stadium, while our stadium is under construction, not great. So you say, hey, we're going to play a game or two at Wrigley Field. Uh, Probably have to probably have to uh, book that for November instead of October because Craig Council is going to have the Chicago Cubs play. I'm just kidding. It's probably going to be free in October, (laughs) but that sounds that sounds well and good. But then a report came out that their athletic director told a booster club that they were going to play a game at Lambeau Field. And that's really cool, except the perceived game at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, is going to be against Wisconsin. On what planet do you punt on a home game to move a game to Lambeau Field against the one school who's going to draw against Lambeau Field, like going to draw to Lambeau Field? 
So essentially what Northwestern is doing is basically whoring out a home game to Wisconsin fans to, to generate a bunch of bunch of money. And that's all well and good. If that's your priority, that's what you want to do. You need you need to cash, okay. But nothing shouts like we don't have any plans to be competitive. We don't take this all that seriously. We don't really believe that we got a chance to compete for a Big Ten or a national title or a college football playoff berth. Quite like moving a game into enemy territory. What are you doing? And I don't know what the defense is. And I, I don't think you can come out and say, like, hey, the reason we're doing that is is because, one, Lambeau Field is bigger than the MLS Stadium. It's bigger than Wrigley Field. It's bigger than Soldier Field. We're going to sell a lot of tickets to that game. Right. Against Wisconsin. <laughs> the, the, the team who is going to outnumber your fan base by a 10-to-1 margin because you are moving a game into their backyard. It completely highlights how deeply, deeply unserious you are about big-time college football. There is not another program, I, I, I like to think, there is not another situation scenario where somebody moves a game into hostile to moves a conference game, a game that is supposed to be a home conference game for you into enemy territory. Now you'll get it with non-conference games or like Ohio state back in the day played TCU in Dallas. And you see it all the time where Alabama will play somebody in Georgia or new Orleans or LSU will play in new Orleans. Oh, it's a neutral site game. Yeah. Okay. But this is a conference game, and it's supposed to be a home game. If they were going to play a home game, a conference game against Minnesota in Green Bay or Rutgers at Lambeau Field, okay, fine, whatever. Like you're, you're, you're doing what you can to make things fun and interesting for your fan base, make things fun and interesting for your players. I have no problem with it. But to move a game a conference game that's supposed to be a home game that you're supposed to covet and cherish and hold on to like a Fabergé egg and do everything you can to create a home environment for your players, for your fan base, for your school, your administration, your sponsors, etc. For you to say, hey, we're going to up and move this thing to significantly closer to the opponent's fan base so we can sell some more tickets. Oh, what are you doing? And I don't think you can come out and say, hey, the reason we're doing this is because we need the extra revenue. Because then it just looks like you, 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 it really cements the idea that you don't give a damn about whether or not you are successful in this sport or not. All you're doing is trying to find the biggest stacks of cash you can find. So you can't admit that that's the reason why. But it's not the first time they've done this. I think in 1991, I believe, Northwestern played a home game against Ohio State in Cleveland. And that's, it's, it, one, it's slightly different. It's 1991 college football compared to 2024 college football. But at the same time, there is a perception that Northwestern should not be in the Big Ten anymore, that there is a push from Big Ten fan bases to be like, why the hell are these guys, like, can't we just cut them loose? What are the parameters for getting rid of a co a conference a college in our conference like what do we have to do to rid northwestern from the big 10 and i don't i, I like northwestern in the big 10 just like i like purdue in the big 10 like i like vanderbilt in the sec like you like wake forest and boston college in the acc and you liked i, I know stanford's not really on that same level but you like oregon state in the pac-12 and you like baylor and tcu in the big 12 because they are the underdogs, and sometimes it's fun to root for and enjoy the underdog. Now, it's not when that team ends up beating your team, but you know pretty quickly. Like I, I, don't, I don't know how old I was watching Big Ten basketball when I was a kid that you were like, oh, there's an abnormal amount of white guys on the floor for Northwestern. <laughs> there is an abnormal amount of dudes who just don't look as athletic as every other, but everybody else in a conference and you watch football and you're like, there's, 
there's a lot of guys who aren't really who don't look like they could play a lot at other Big Ten schools. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to put two and two together that like, oh, that 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 team might be playing with like one arm tied behind their back. So I enjoy their participation in the Big Ten. I enjoy wondering, questioning what they could or could not be each year. And I, I talked about it, I think, last week that every year that you think like, oh. Western might be pretty good this year is the year that they're two and 10. And then the year they're like, Oh God, I feel bad for Northwestern. They go eight and five. And you're like, how the hell did that happen? So I, 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 I like Northwestern. I, I like those quasi academic, like the only reason you're here is because you're in a big city and you uh, are the point extra of the conference. I like that little bit of spice into the conference. I like that that exists. But you can't make it so obvious that you have ridiculously different priorities than pretty much everybody else in your conference. You you just can't flat out peel the curtain back and be like, hey, it's the the Mr. Krabs meme gif of like, and why why did you do that for, sir? Why did you move your game against Wisconsin into Wisconsin? Money! It, it, there has to be there has to be a better explanation for that, even if that explanation is poppycock, even if it's ridiculous and doesn't pass a sniff test. If you if you can have some reason, like, hey, the reason we did this is that you can point to, and it almost makes you go like, okay, I get it. That's fine. I I don't see I don't foresee that reason, that response coming. I don't see a reason coming from Northwestern. It's like, the reason that we did this is because even if it's something stupid, like, you know, we were invited by the Green Bay Packers because, uh, you know, they were going to retire the number of a Northwestern grit, whatever. If you can pull that out of your butt, great. But when people are like, hey, why, wait, why are we moving? Why is our homecoming game now against Ohio State in mid-November, the week before Thanksgiving, when we're going to play an October game against Wisconsin in Wisconsin as a home game? And your response is uh, like shoulder shrug. <laughs> no, I don't know. Because we got to sell 60,000 tickets. We got to sell 70,000 tickets to make up for the fact that we're only going to sell 25,000 tickets at the MLS stadium or 30,000 tickets at Soldier Field or 30,000 tickets at Wrigley Field. (laughs) If that's that's the reason you're moving a game closer to give yourself a disadvantage, you are deeply, deeply, deeply unserious about competing in the upper echelons of college football in the big boy stratosphere. Nothing will highlight that. Could you imagine? And and I don't even know that there there is a there is a comparable scenario. Like it's it's essentially Vanderbilt saying, "Hey, we uh we're we're having renovations to our stadium, uh, so our game against Alabama, we're actually going to move it to Birmingham." They'd be mocked, ridiculed, laughed off the streets. But because it's kind of a little old Northwestern, it's like, all right, yeah, yeah, you'll have that. But what the hell are you doing? Like Everybody knows you're not competing at the same level as everybody else in the Big Ten. But to take a highlighter to it at a time where it is quickly becoming a who's who in the Big Ten and the SEC, and it, everybody views it as a, a, a pretty much a speed race to the power two. And there's only going to be so many finite spots in those power two to really put a spotlight on the fact that you don't have the same priorities as Ohio State, Michigan, USC, UCLA, Washington, Oregon, Penn State, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Florida State, Clemson, Alabama, Texas, Oklahoma, LSU, Florida, Georgia. I I don't know why you'd make that decision right now. I I think there's somewhat a bit of a hubris there that like uh, the Big Ten's not going to not going to leave us sitting out and out hanging out to dry. And they might not in the next five to 10 years. But at some point, everybody's going to get on the same page. A college football is big business. And 
why are some of these schools riding our coattails to billions of dollars in revenue? Well, we can just keep it for ourselves. So I, I don't know what Northwestern's doing, but I do know that they are, sh- they are putting out the bat signal to everybody else in the Big Ten. We don't give a damn about this as much as y'all do. I think it's a bad, bad signal to send. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content that we're pumping out here on Saturday Glory. If you're watching, listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. Back at it tomorrow. We'll see you then here on the Daily Huddle with Saturday Glory.